Welcome to the open house, the Zoom open house. And um, as I said, I'm David Smiley, Associate Director of the Urban Design Program. And um, I will take you through things so you're familiar with, with what we're after. This is Avery Hall, the main architecture building. Uh, you'll spend time here and then Urban Design also has a studio in the building right behind there. So um, uh, this is the kind of the main entry point, the great Avery Hall with Avery Library. And, okay. So um, here we are, there's Kate Orff currently in New Zealand, uh, getting some work done and uh, we look forward to meeting you. And meanwhile, we will get started. Um, what do we do? What is urban design? The amazing thing about urban design is that um, it's not a legal definition. It's not a, there's no uh, test you have to take to be an urban designer. So in many ways, urban design programs create themselves. And so there are a lot of differences in programs. Um, but I would just like to let you know that several premises for our program is that we, even though we're called urban design or architecture and urban design technically, uh, we don't actually see a look at just cities because for us, the city is not a delineated or fixed or political entity. Uh, we look at, at, at territories, inhabited landscapes of different densities, of different gradients of different forms of inhabitation. So a village could be part of an urban design study. So urban is a, a, a very, in many ways, a general term. But we look at infrastructures and networks of all sorts of social processes and, and resources in cities or outside of cities, in valleys and villages, in ecosystems. Uh, the second point about our program is that we have a kind of two-pronged way of thinking about it. First of all, we look at immediate questions, immediate threats at local, regional, and global scales. And we also hope to engage long-term questions, long-term needs of communities everywhere we go. So for us, um, urban design is a, a kind of tools-based, skills-based project for specific sites, specific groups and communities. But we also look at it as a, as a larger, almost theoretical framework that examines urban form, examines how cities change, and examines what exactly we count as knowledge for, for urbanists or, or people looking at the built environment. Um, so there's a kind of a dual set of guidelines that we look at pretty much. As, as much as possible. Bottom of your screen is a, a drawing of Amman, Jordan and looking at the water system, an old water system that is studied, being studied to be re revised and revitalized because of uh, the problems of, of water accessibility in a, in a dense city where water is precious. Um, so overall, um, the program uh, looks at global urbanization and climate, the climate crisis. Urbanization produces inequality. And so we're very much interested in social justice, which is made unique and specified through the climate crisis. We use the word climate change sometimes, but we, sh we think we should think of it as crisis because we are in the middle of it. It's not something that's coming down our, coming our way. Um, we look at all sorts of environments, all sorts of places that are becoming untenable to inhabit and will become difficult to inhabit. So we need to develop new ways of thinking about places. New kinds of research is necessary. New kinds of engagements are necessary um, because uh, familiar patterns of inhabitation are, are no longer sufficient. Uh, they will not hold up. So we are hoping to, to, to kind of make things 
better admitting the fact that um, it's going to be difficult and we um, need to engage. And so really we, our, our question is, what is the role of design of any sort in a world that is changing so dramatically? So at the, at the bottom of your screen, you see <clears throat> a project in Poughkeepsie, New York, where uh, an old stream that was polluted and left to rot is turned into uh, a community center, um, an educational center uh, for a very diverse community, uh, for a community um, of inequality, with great inequalities historically in Poughkeepsie. And so this is just one drawing from a, a group of students looking at both housing, uh, new infrastructures. And this is the kind of interdisciplinarity that we, we ask uh, of ourselves to cover social questions as well as ecological questions. <clears throat> uh, this is another uh, activity also in Poughkeepsie a few years ago where uh, this is a different stream uh, that runs, a very ancient stream that runs through the town, the city, and um, but needs to be rethought and cleaned up. Uh, and, and the communities abutting the stream uh, need to change their practices. Uh, so both the town itself and its regulations. Uh, and so essentially, we look at certain themes in particular. One is the uh, that built environments and, and settlement patterns are, are, are complex systems. There's no one way in and there's no one way to, to deal with things. Um, one of the ways to, to move forward is that we focus on engagement and learning. Uh, we need to learn, other people need to learn. We need to, to reach out and be part of community understandings. So we spend a lot of time on that. We believe in social justice, that, that any kind of environmental change includes a social justice component because every bit of the environment affects people differently and has affected people historically. And so we're very interested in that. And that leads to our kind of position of humanitarianism, which is essentially that, that um, we need to be concerned with other people and other systems and even other forms of nature and, and organic life. All of these things are part of our, um, our world and we can't ignore them. So we look at design, not just as, as making a thing, but also design as examining and researching, looking at histories, looking at, at maps, looking at social patterns and working with people and working with community organizations um, as well as experts in other fields so that we can co-create and uh, uh, kind of ways of approaching particular problems, both lo locally specific, but also globally informed because um, everything, as you know, at this point with the environment uh, we live in, uh, little small decisions about ecology and systems have great reverberations elsewhere. Um, and in that regard, <clears throat> we do not look at the city and nature as, as opposites, but as really a, a continuum, a part of a continuum of, of urbanization and the way in which the world, um, the developed development processes use nature, create different kinds of nature and vice versa, how nature operates uh, in different ways through human intervention. Um, we also have a kind of series of methods and, and approaches. One of them is storytelling which is that we don't just put a few solutions on the table or say, you should try this. We actually try to engage communities and organizations to help them tell stories about that engage their daily life, that engage the, the problems they face, to engage the kind of future um, and, and, and have a kind of narrative about how change happens. So um, it's, a draw, it's kind of a drawn out process um, of, of discussion and and creating um, uh, ways of thinking that cohere with different elements, with different ingredients um, that changes over time. So we do uh, both 
<clears throat> analysis, considerable amount of analysis. Uh, you'll spend half a semester where you think you should get to the design already, but no, it's it's as much um, a, a long-term analysis uh, project that we that we insist upon, and always with visualization. How how is that? How is that? Um, <clears throat> how do we translate and communicate um, the kinds of thinking of analyses, but also looking towards uh, creating scenarios for to address different kinds of problems. So essentially we embrace all kinds of change, uh, recognizing that there's no stopping such things, but through formal, spatial, social, political, technical aspects of different uh, issues, we can um, embrace that and, and redirect, you might say, some of those things. Uh, this image is uh, some students in the first semester traveling outside of Manhattan um, to, this is in Queens, um, to a small water body. Uh, you can see the Empire State Building in the background, but we tend to move to other neighborhoods in the city. And you'll get a sense in your first semester of what that means and how amazing uh, the city really is. In, both human terms, infrastructure terms. Uh, perhaps most importantly, <clears throat> we view um, the idea of representation and collaboration as a kind of pair, a kind of unified project where representation is not, does not just mean a, a set of drawings that represent something, that are images of something, but that representation is also a form of participation and collaboration. So on the left, you see uh, different ways in which uh, um, citizens and community groups participate in study and, 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 and input, or any on the lower left, a project where people were able to uh, use a plexiglass plate in order to um, redraw their street uh, so uh, all sor sorts of engagement, a lot of times involving young people because um, in some ways <clears throat> they tell their parents what to do, but also um, to get different kinds of input and to also make engagement part of a, uh, not just a kind of strangely serious project, but also one where people can kind of see their own roles as possible. Um, and also representation includes regional maps, detailed maps. Um, in the center is a, is a map of the Hudson Valley region showing uh, what they call human nature, but, but not the kind of human nature of, that we often think of as a, a human consciousness, but actually how humans and nature interact. And it's a, it's a map of different landscapes and different densities. So we, we really do work at that scale and try to represent that complexity on the right is a, is a zoom in on a project uh, where students were basically retrofitting a series of mid blocks with community activities, um, and so it's a it's a it's a a really um, accurate representation of collaboration that um, it kind of embraces the existing conditions of a city uh, at the same time as trying to re reuse the grid, reuse mid blocks, um, and think through. Uh, social activities and social questions uh, within the built fabric of the city. And also um, <clears throat> we celebrate ourselves and we celebrate the disciplines. This is an end of year show photograph. So at the end of each year, because you're only, you'll be at GSAP for one, one, three semesters, one year. Um, and so this is pre COVID because we didn't have an end of year show for a, a year or two, um, but we're back to the end of year show and, um, something to look forward to where the whole school becomes a massive gallery and, and uh, it's a great time to celebrate what you've been doing. But meanwhile, a little more detail about um, what we do, uh, the structure of the program and what we're after for you to learn. <clears throat> uh, the three studios you would take, summer, fall, and spring, you arrive about June 1st and dig right in. Um, is New York City based, um, taught by um, professors Golan and Voron with four other faculty members. And <clears throat> we look at problems in the city. 
we also, for those of you who know the map of New York City, we also periodically go to New Jersey because it's very close and the neighborhoods have similar questions uh, ec ecologically and politically and socially, but it's, it's a New York Metro area studio. And <clears throat> I think and I'll just mention at this point and I'll come back to it, that our studios are team taught. So if there's 40 or 50 or 60 of you in the room, you're all in one studio with six professors. You work in teams of three or four, and you have two or three faculty who are tending to your group. So it's it's a very different model of, of teaching um, where it's collaborative from the very first moment uh, you enter the room. And that's a, something that's really vital to our, our um, interpretation of how, how change happens in the world. And we'll come back to that. The second semester in the fall of the urbanized region. So I showed you some images uh, from the Hudson Valley. Um, but now Professor Emmanuel Amasu has um, taken a different direction and, and um, in a few days they will be going to Atlanta where the Atlanta region is where uh, this fall, the current semester is, is uh, working and I'll talk more about that. And then in the spring semester, Professor Orff takes students with again, six, five or six faculty <clears throat> somewhere in the world. We've been to um, most continents, not the Arctic or Antarctica, but um, uh, if you look at our website, you'll see we've been to quite a few places and um, it's a very exciting travel experience to really um, get a glimpse of urban and territorial and regional questions um, in, in utterly different places. So the New York studio is called the Five Borough Studio. And we look at sites, systems, We've spent a lot of time thinking about neighborhoods uh, as a kind of um, a social, it used to be called a social unit, but we, we kind of think of it as a kind of social network just as much. And also we learn how to tell stories in the summer. The other part of, of the summer in studio one is that all the other classes you take in the summer are connected to it. So there's a a GIS and digital techniques class, which is tied to studio. And there's another class um, with uh, digital, um, I'm sorry, with stories and narrative and video making also tied to studio. So um, it's very much a integrated summer where you, you kind of um, are brought into all the kind of techniques and questions of, of urban design. So here we are <clears throat> braving infrastructure in a part of New York that you probably would never have gone to otherwise. Um, and, 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 you know, right behind where the photographer is standing is, is a neighborhood. Um, and so we are kind of navigating um, the different factors of social life in these places. And here we're, we're working um, in a kind of community charrette with visitors and experts. If you look at the map of New York, you can see um, here is Manhattan. And I think this group is actually working in Jamaica Bay, which is an, an amazingly complex ecosystem on its own. But um, this is a typical picture of how, how studio operates. Um, this is, I think, two groups of students coming together with uh, a lecturer and a, a local expert. In the summer, we also do a lot of work on um, teaching you how to interview people and record with their permission, of course, and ask questions. Um, and we want to be able to um, have all of our students comfortable with the idea that they, they must interact with other people, not just architects and urban designers. Uh, and it's, it's a real struggle sometimes, it's a real challenge, but everybody comes away thinking, Wow, that was amazing. And um, in one of the classes, you even, you'll make a short video. In a different class, you'll make an animated video related to that. <clears throat> uh, this is a typical mid-review looking uh, where you have a group of, a more typical view of, of, of reviewers, but also the three students 
Oh, it's actually a fourth student just off screen. And this is looking at analyses, um, very broad scale analyses of, <clears throat> of um, a part of Brooklyn, but also looking at details of, of specific inter <clears throat> interventions. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, these are a couple of drawings from the summer where you can see analyses of different modes of transportation, a global look at um, the food system as it as it works or doesn't work through New York. On the on the bottom, two kind of design proposals that have to do with uh, different use of the waterfront, a lot taking into account its history, and on the right, a kind of whole new system of energy generation, um, and this is actually out in. Um, New Jersey out in just across the river close by. And so um, <clears throat> the summer is a time of, of learning how to do analysis and learning how to tell stories about cities through visual means as well as narratives that you will speak in a review and also beginning to design uh, interventions that um, account for uh, the array of needs of different communities but also the larger community. Studio two regional change uh, now going to Atlanta where Professor Admasu and his team <clears throat> look at land and property. What is property? <clears throat> and it's a really big question about um, uh, race, politics, infrastructure, the history of land use law, the history of, of exclusion and inclusion. And so it's a very hard hitting uh, uh, studio with um, real challenge in um, in opening your eyes onto the American scene, but also to international questions brought into your analyses about exclusion and property. <clears throat> the studio is called currently After Property. And so it raises the question of what can urban design do where there are different conceptions of what property means in different places? What is ownership? Are there different kinds of collective ownership? Are there different ways in which communities can make claims to having a, a, a role in shaping where they live and how they work? So this is just through the right now uh, where Emmanuel is on volume three and he's going to, um, the, the, the studio is going to Atlanta in a couple of days. Um, and so we, we really dig in here and, and ask about <clears throat> claims to land, claims to property, and how that can be challenged uh, through design and through uh, storytelling and through community interaction. So here we see a, a kind of a few field conditions of um, research, walking around Atlanta, we have incredible amounts of interviews set up and meetings set up with artists, with politicians, with ecology groups, with um, com community groups, with land trusts, uh, trying to think about how to um, help help the, the, the citizens and the people to participate and, and create conditions for change. On the bottom is a, uh, kind of a, a, a collage analysis of different conditions in Atlanta, because we want students to be able to um, translate some of their perceptions and some of their thinking um, into visual form. Uh, so in this image, there's historical maps, there's unbuilt problems, and there's the highway system underlying things. So it's, it's really a studio which engages representation in very complex ways. Again, here, both through representation of of uh, voices and representations of history and previous interventions. Uh, <clears throat> this is um, one project uh, that's not seeking to change the, the housing or the street grid, but actually proposing a kind of community ownership of shared, sp uh, of once private spaces become shared spaces, uh, which is a, a in some ways, a, a very um, a, a long-standing tradition of of having common land uh, between private 
poems uh, that was once much more widely undertaken in the U.S. anyway, and um, <clears throat> is really interestingly documented here. Oops. Excuse me, Professor. Yes. Uh, are you sharing the screen? Uh, um, it's not visible. Uh, oh my goodness. Of course. I am sharing the screen. Uh, uh, it is visible. Yes. Yeah, the screen is visible. Uh, if someone is having a, if you're having a problem, maybe you okay, should restart. Yes, yes. Thanks. Oh, okay. It's visible. Scare me. Um, here is another um, project uh, that's looking at large scale land use patterns and trying to rethink them um, through different, thinking about different regulation patterns to enable uh, a kind of addi an additional layer to the housing situation in a particular neighborhood. And so we ask students to <clears throat> really um, rethink uh, and invent upon what is existing. <clears throat> to really change um, in habitation and, and community relationships and ecological systems. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a drawing which is showing a kind of uh, a collective set of proposals about um, community spaces, shared spaces, but also a kind of alternative e ecologies and economies to um, use local inputs and, and locally farmed and locally created resources to um, to kind of dissociate from the, the kind of larger economic system to, to a certain degree, which has not served uh, everyone as well as it should in places like Atlanta, but which of course is a global problem as well. And this is just one, uh, Transformation, as you can see, there's a uh, Chevron is a, actually a, a series of gas stations in America, and this is um, so after after property sometimes also includes um, rethinking uh, the kind of economies that generate that. Well, in this case, uh, a, a, an extension and an adaptation of a gas station into a, a community transportation hub uh, with all sorts of social infrastructures. And you know these things are in, in part speculative, but also uh, ways of rethinking the the history of of, of economic institutions, the rehist the history of of uh, land use patterns to kind of redirect value and redirect beneficiaries, uh, redef redef redirect the benefits uh, of of different kinds of institutions, and that's very much what the um, we're often trying to do and. Professor Admasu in the in the fall is really pushing on students to think beyond what we call the limits of property, which which in some ways um, creates a kind of uh, a, a one directional, uh, one dimensional set of principles and guidelines, and we try to open that up with different proposals for for land use, for even for economy and inhabitation. Uh, let me see if I can see the chat. Okay, thank you. So the third studio, Studio Three, Global Cities and Territories, uh, where Kate travels with faculty and students to an international or several locations, actually, when we have, we usually go to at least two locations, if not three. So the <clears throat> dealing with primarily climate and water as as the generator in fact it's called the water urbanism studio which means uh you know too much too little not clean not well distributed under threat and of course sea level rise and um uh different forms of um freshwater system threats so we're also looking at um informality as part of that landscape uh, governance, which is a very important aspect to uh, understanding the management and decision-making process of all territories, cities, villages, whatever, um, in addition to property. 
property as we saw with Studio 2. And social capital, how do social organizations, how do cultural organizations, how can they participate? How are they already participating and pushing for change? And we, we work very hard to, 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 to um, supplement their work and learn from them. <clears throat> so um, this is just a quick um, sample. We can brag, we've been in so many places. And this is just a few years worth from India, South America, Vietnam, um, Mozambique. Um, and so uh, each, we go to these different places and, you know, Kate works extremely hard to um, work with, you know, global organizations and local organizations, everything from the World Wildlife Fund to a community group seeking to strict, to, to revitalize a stream, um, people seeking to defend their, their rights to farm, people threatened by ecological and climate change. So uh, uh, one year we went to three sites <clears throat> along the Great Rift Valley, uh, which stretches almost all the way from Lebanon down to um, Mozambique, and um, which was a, a, an ancient um, kind of uh, tectonic uh, created valley, but which has an incredible array of conditions with respect to water. Uh, as I said, too much, too little, or too dramatic. So here's a case of uh, a kind of a stream that um, uh, reaching its high, high water, not yet reaching a high water mark, but but um, not having a kind of management system in place to even understand how to work with the water. And so th that's <clears throat> just one series of projects uh, from that year. Uh, most of our time going to these international destinations, just like we do here in New York or any city, is to, to meet with local experts, local advocates, um, who explain to us conditions in particular places, who explain and, and answer our questions about what they're up to. And we really try to um, spend a lot of time. So when we're out in, in, in these places, uh, it's um, an intense focus on existing conditions and what people are doing. So here, uh, we have Amman Jordan dealing with uh, water scarcity, uh, but also flooding when it does rain, or Madurai, India, where uh, the water systems um, are sometimes overwhelmed through monsoons, but uh, also you know need need to understand. We help need to help them understand and 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 learn ourselves how uh, water systems need to be um, maintained and managed as part of community life, not just a kind of uh, department of water management coming in and installing infrastructures, but uh, managing water and flooding and, and sewage, even um, through um, community-based methods or community-fueled uh, interests. On the left um, from Kolkata, uh, a kind of water management plan that, that organizes <clears throat> an older form of, of canal making into to a new form of settlement making as a way <clears throat> to channel water and to um, to manage it. Uh, and it's just one of many drawings and many propositions about um, uh, organizing cities around um, understanding how the, the water ebbs and flows and how sewage is is um, maintained, managed and, and taken care of. Um, <clears throat> here's um, uh, on the lower right, dealing, talking with um, water experts uh, in, in Pune, India, trying to figure out different kinds of plants, what kinds of, of wildlife um, relate and, and do well under certain water conditions. Uh, on the upper right, uh, talking with um, a forest expert in, in Vietnam, um, helping us understand the delicacy of environments. On the left, the drawing of uh, how a, an, a bridge can be reused and rebuilt to uh, without using uh, tons of concrete and steel to create marketplaces and to um, to kind of to to plug into local economic and social activities. And of course, <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, continuous analysis. 
that we want to go into not just historical analysis, but spatial and tectonic um, analysis where uh, this is a water system that spans Jordan and Syria, but also touches on Palestine and Israel, uh, which is politically contested, but also has its own problems of use and overuse, different uses and overuses, and different needs of different um, power, different needs and different different functions, also unequal power relations between different countries where dams are put in, which is a problem all over the world where, you know, living downstream from the dam could condemn you to a very different water capacity than upstream. And so um, looking at the um, this kind of transect, uh, looking at obsolescence is a key thing because infrastructures, um, you know, age, you know, you put in an infrastructure, a pipeline or anything, and um, it has to be maintained and charted and, and watched. And so part of what we talk about is not just a, a new system, but maintaining systems, managing systems, and taking care of existing systems in new ways. So um, this, this, kind of, this kind of drawing helps us see the many issues that um, are part of management of territory, whether it's urbanized or not. Um, <clears throat> we also, um, Kate had to do uh, one of her spring studios um, where um, we didn't get to travel. And we also made it more, uh, more familiar where we had more information since we weren't traveling looking at the Mississippi River from, from top to bottom, as we say, from, um, <clears throat> from Minnesota to New Orleans, and, and looking at the Mississippi River as, uh, as you see, a living river, one that's dramatically changes, has dramatically changed over time, even though uh, kind of a previous generation of infrastructure making has tried, like many countries around the world, to channelize and, and concretize the roots of rivers, which which actually makes them uh, unsustainable over the long term. So um, we study that um, at different communities along the, the river. Sometimes, you know, taking away levees and taking away walls and, and trying to let the water find its own roots, which is a very different difficult proposition when you have built up communities. But just trying to um, rethink the landscape as more porous and think of community building as part of that porous system of water flow, which is a radical transformation for many communities because so many places across the world have gotten used to the idea of you build a wall and contain water, but that actually uh, does not work over time in m most instances. And so we, we struggle with that in the Mississippi studio. And then uh, um, in Belize, um, in uh, off uh, the near the Yucatan, in um, a small country that has great and beautiful coastline, threatened. The coral reefs are completely threatened by pollution. Uh, development patterns for international tourism are threatening livelihoods. And so, not only did we um, have to uh, kind of work with all these people to deal with coastline problems, but also to look at um, upstream and see how uh, the water system could perhaps accommodate whole other ways of earning a living because people eventually are going to have to move away from the coast, but we don't, we want, we were trying to help them stay in the neighborhood as it were and find ways of living up the different river riverbeds where there could be other forms of agriculture and, and uh, employment. And so this is a section going from <clears throat> the ocean, moving its way inland, <clears throat> trying to uh, work with um, local ecologies, local agricultural systems, um, um, so that uh, these things could continue uh, despite or alongside climate change. And on the upper right, a kind of a new, new design for a kind of community-based um, um, housing and market system that is um, basically deployed within an agricultural system. And so that um, 
<clears throat> the, the the kind of culture would be um, uh, not a town separated from its its fields, but where where um, the the whole e ecology of settlement changes based upon new ways of of, of facing uh, agricultural conditions as they change. Most recently, uh, <clears throat> the Spring Studio went to Colombia uh, um, to to um, Bogota, Cartagena, and Cali. Um, we went with students also from the Climate School, which is a new entity at the university. And we worked with um, uh, the different mayors, different community groups, different ecology groups, and uh, really learned about specific ways in which water and agriculture and urban growth um, have been kind of at war with each other in, in a certain way. Um, not literal war, excuse me. Um, but um, trying, we were trying to work with the local groups to kind of rethink how communities could function around these very delicate water systems, very delicate forms of agriculture, um, and helping the local agricultural systems um, <clears throat> be sustainable. Because perhaps some of you know that um, there's huge movements, uh, global movements afoot to, to use um, uh, non-local species for corn or wheat or other products. Um, and there's a big movement to, 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 to um, fight that and say, you know, we need our local products and not be tied to international markets and fertilizer and seed, uh, but actually, you know, use species that have survived here. In addition to understanding the pressures of, 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 um, of differences in water flow and differences in temperatures, which are only affecting different kinds of plants that can grow, as well as understanding the patterns of inhabitation that the city has traditionally taken in, in this part of the world. So there's a lot of factors. And so you're, you're going to be working <clears throat> with different experts and different university um, groups. In most cases, when we go to one of these cities or places, uh, students from the local university will actually work alongside our students when we're there uh, in the 10 days or so that we're there. And then we will stay in touch with those students and faculty over Zoom, which is why Zoom ever since COVID has really in many ways helped us. So we can collaborate and we do um, uh, over Zoom. And, and so the students in, in this case, <clears throat> Columbia, who are working with us in New York um, and kind of sharing information and kind of uh, doing a, almost a joint studio, even though um, our capacities are quite different. <clears throat> um, I see a hand. Let's see. Uh, okay, who is that? Yes, this is this is Pierce. Can y'all hear me? Hi. Sure. Hi. Yeah. Um, j just a quick question on community partners. When we're as as we're on the subject, I'm I'm sure that community partners are like kind of paramount for supporting a studio's curriculum within our site. I was just wondering if you'd speak a bit more to what the profile of these organizations look like, NGOs, universities, et cetera, how y'all curate these partners, and then what does the engagement model, I guess, look like, both on-site and off-site? Uh, it's a great question, uh, because <clears throat> it's actually, to say the word community partner is the tip of an iceberg, because um, it's a so many community partners are so different from each other. Each site has very different types of organizations. There are some that are <clears throat> come from agricultural um, advocacy. Some come from uh, uh, social justice advocacy. Um, others come from uh, land rights advocacy. And then there are university groups which are not overtly advocates so much as just other universities like ourselves, but local universities trying to address similar problems as we do. Um, and so in some ways they're, they're urban design co-professionals or they're urban design co-urban designers because they're working in programs in their universities. And so their faculty help out our faculty and are on Zoom on the reviews even after we visit. 
Um, so that's another form. Then there are many, in, in other cases, there are international NGOs like the World Wildlife Fund um, uh, is very much interested in, um, in, in climate change and in setting up uh, local groups to, to, uh, to organize that. There are many organizations that do that. Managing that is actually uh, an incredibly complex project because first of all, how do we, you know, Kate and some of the other faculty spent a long time permanently looking at different groups and finding different groups and using their contacts to find yet other groups. So uh, the, 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 the work that happens before the studio is quite intense to set up the right relationships. When we're on site, <clears throat> you know, for five, six, seven days, uh, we're working with these groups continuously and also work, walking around and getting tours, walking ar around with them and kind of sh them showing us the kind of sites that are specifically related to certain questions. But we also have mayors and, and, um, and local officials also participating to get their point of view. Um, you know, we try to, to, to learn as much as we can. And, you know, once you, when you, we've been very successful because I think um, uh, people in these kind of stressed communities are, are looking for new ways to do things. And so what we bring to it is a kind of, you know, you could say a fresh pair of eyes, um, but usually um, we have to kind of rein in our fresh pair of eyes to, to accommodate what the facts on the ground are. But it's that mix, which is really interesting and, and, and sometimes problematic. Um, and there's disagreements among the community groups. They're not all on the same page because some of the farmers have different points of view than the, the, the town businessmen. And so, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not interested in conflict, but conflict is always there in some form. So sometimes community outreach and partnerships expose conflict. And it'll be right there on Zoom, you know, two weeks after we've been there where two, two organizations kind of give us very different points of view. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's real. That's very real. Uh, Cause there's no, there's no easy sol solutions or questions that, um, that we can fix. Uh, so sometimes it's a very uh, contentious process. And that's actually, in some ways, you know, you've hit, hit, it's something important when there's when there's tension over it, um, and, and that's a something that we we try to embrace. Um, <clears throat> the other kinds of classes you'll be taking. Um, well, let me let me preface this by saying, in the summer, um, you will be taking uh, an assigned set of classes. So, uh, when you arrive you'll be taking four classes, studio, a history class, what we call a New York, reading New York urbanism class, which is uh, learning about New York City, but learning how to, how to film and photograph New York City. And then a fourth class on digital softwares. So we actually, I know this sounds terrible, but we don't give you a choice when you first get here. Uh, some of you are from, uh, most of you are going to be from all over the world and so part of our reasoning is we want to get you on uh, an introductory studio and semester where you're learning all the different issues that urban designers face and what the issues that we think are, are, are important. So <clears throat> uh, some students bristle at that, but then most students recognize that um, we're trying to, to kind of shape a discourse. And though that discourse dramatically shifts, we are, we do that in the summer where um, everybody kind of tries to figure out um, their skills, their knowledge um, together. So as I said, it's one big studio. You have 40, 50, 60 students with uh, six or eight faculty and it's one big room and everybody's kind of learning it together. So the seminar options are for the fall and spring semesters. And then we kind of give you a lot more freedom. We have a few requirements, but they're, they're minor. And so these are just some classes uh, that are currently being taught in at GSAP um, or have been taught at GSAP. <clears throat> and you can see the titles there. They're very focused on 
the kind of different ways one can look at the problem of the of cities and territories and social justice from more ecological takes to more street-based interests to questions about public space. Um, and so uh, we also have um, some uh, GIS uh, elect, um, seminars as well that are not actually listed here, um, which you learn in the summer, but you can take advanced versions of that um, in later seminars. So these are just images from some of these classes. Um, <clears throat> I teach a class called Public Space, Rhetorics and Practices. Uh, there's another well-known planner, Damon Rich, uh, who teaches about tensions in the history and current affairs of community um, design and urban design. Uh, Justin Moore teaches a class with uh, a class uh, at Tuskegee um, and they have half the class on Zoom so that students from a different university are also participating. And that continues uh, as we speak. And then Recombinant Urbanism by Graham Shane, whose um, very well-known book, Urban Design Since 1945, is a little inset there. I mean, he's a, a brilliant and knowledgeable thinker about urban design practices around the world. So these are just four, there's, there's um, others that come and go, but, um, <clears throat> we're trying to um, undertake what we call research in a more traditional way, which is that you study other practices, you do readings, you you kind of interview people. I mean, each one of these seminars has different methods. Um, um, and uh, we try to get you um, to learn what is research when you're not in the studio. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that can happen. And then also in the fall and spring semesters, <clears throat> we have uh, electives that are um, not in urban design. They're in the architecture program. Uh, they're in the School of International and Public Affairs. They're in the climate school. They're in the program for sustainability management. They're outside of Avery Hall and we, and we help you navigate um, all of these electives. So information modeling or data mining in the city are taught by other architecture professors. Human rights in the Anthropocene is taught by one of our faculty in the human rights department. Um, then we have uh, spatial exclusion is taught in the planning program. Uh, some of our students this semester are taking comparative urban policy in the School of International Public Affairs. Um, there's the sustainability management program, which has uh, different classes all the time, which are very um, hands-on uh, kind of uh, studies of some very specific aspects of sustainability practices. Uh, and you can, and every year I hunt around for classes where it, there might be uh, uh, cities <clears throat> of Central America, a kind of sociology class. And, um, you know, I'll put that on the list of, of electives. So. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we hope that you will realize is that in your three semesters at Columbia, you should you take advantage of being at a great university. And that's one of the things that the electives are for. And um, you can take um, a very minimal amount of classes or you can take a lot depending on your workload, depending upon how, you, how comfortable you feel with all your work. So um, there's, there's room in your schedules for um, different forms of um, different amounts and different types of classes to take. Uh, the other thing I should say <clears throat> is that um, the university is a very busy place outside of class. Uh, here's the lecture series currently going on at GSAP, um, but there are equally amazing lectures going on all over the place. It's a, it's a, it's an incredibly rich institution. And I don't mean that just money. I meant, I meant that a, a rich and in culture institution where um, there are incredible people speaking in political science, in climate change, in social tensions. Um, <clears throat> and you will be exhausted and you won't go to any half the stuff you would like to go to. So it's a great, it's a great opportunity. Um, and I'm still awed by how much is taking place in different programs and different departments. 
um, so it's a, it's a really, um, it's a good problem to have too many things you want to go to. So that's all I have uh, to basically give you the, the kind of the, the kind of the gist of our program and the kind of basic expectations <clears throat> and um, really, uh, I, I hope I give you a sense of our attitude, our position, um, our kind of uh, treating urbanism as more as much a social condition as a physical condition. Uh, understanding what we mean by research, both in the studio and outside of the studio.